this video we have a question and answer about database normalization. Now, this was part of one of our live streams. However, I didn't really repeat the question very well, so I want to go ahead and repeat the question here before we dive into the recorded live stream. The question was from TopCat19, and they asked the question, I have a question about uh, database normalization is basically what he's talking about. I noticed that FM starting point has a lot of fields in a table. How do you, RCC, make a solution for clients? Do they also have so many fields in one table or do you make the tables narrower? I thought if a table has a lot of fields it will slow down, but I don't see it I don't see it slow in FM starting point. Is this thanks to Nick and his lean design? So basically the question that the person is asking is about whether you're going to organize a database in a, in a way where each little category of information has its own table. In fact, for example, if you have a contact record that has an address, say they have a second or third address, there's really two ways of addressing this. One, you could create a, a set of fields in the contact table for address one, and then another kind of duplicate set of fields for address two and address three. In a lot of situations, that might be simpler to do. However, strictly speaking, if you're trying to create a normalized database that's really tightly normalized, and, and for those of you who don't understand this terminology, this is if you have a database background. So a lot of you watching the FileMaker training don't have a database background. You're like normal humans, right? You, 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 you have a day job or you did something else for a living. Now you're building a database or, or custom application and you're trying to make that work for you. And of course, so when a question like this comes up, it's a very technical person trying to ask me a question. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the live stream video. I think what you're gonna find out, however, is that there's a happy medium between being really aggressively, aggressively normalized, which I call kind of an anal process where people are a little bit OCD and it has to be exactly correct, as opposed to just throwing all the fields into one table, which makes a flat file. And so one thing to consider that I didn't mention in the live stream is reporting requirements. If you have a lot of reporting requirements and you have to kind of report that differently or total it differently, things like that, then that's definitely where you want to have the data normalized. So if you had a lot of reports about people's addresses, like these addresses are in this state and these addresses are in this state, et cetera, you want to take those address fields out of the contacts table, put them in a separate table. So reporting requirements are a big one. Now, a lot of people just have an address. They're going to mail to that. They're going to mail, they're going to have that address. So if they have to mail someone, they know where to send it to. If that's all you have to do, then pretty much you can just put the fields in the contacts table in an example. So it depends upon what you want to do, what you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and roll that footage. So there's a question about when you structure a FileMaker file, I guess the question is, uh, the way I would phrase it, which is not official, is how anal do you want to be when you build the file? And so back in the old days with FileMaker 2, FileMaker was really a flat file system. And that's why after that everyone, even though FileMaker started becoming relational in 3, it was legitimately relational, people couldn't get past the fact it was a flat file in 1990. I had people in 2001 saying, ah, you use FileMaker, it's a flat file system. It hasn't been a flat file in a decade ding dong right so the question is how do you structure the file and really it gets down to a point of it's a conversation of normalizing data it's i'm going to try to just kind of skim through the conversation very quickly but this is so say this is fm starting point right here this is our crm i'm going to bring it over here i'm going to tell it to hide all the other distracting stuff around the computer so this is the crm and the question is how do you structure like if you go to contacts and I have an address right here. You could structure the address, so there's an address table, an address one, two, three. Now here's the rub. Every time you build a relationship, your mental, mentally, you have to, okay, so, so let's just take a look, and this gets back to Anchor Buoy. Um, it's how you structure the relationship. So if we're, the way Anchor Buoy works, and I, it's almost like a totally separate conversation, but we're on the contact screen right here. There should be a main TO for the contacts data entry screen. So if I go to File, Manage, Database, and if you don't know what Anchor Buoy is, it's video 1130 and 1131, I think, in your video training, even for the Udemy people. It's uh, up there, there's two videos that go together. If I go to Manage Database, I go to Relationships, 
I scroll down to I find contact. So just by me not even reading a thing, I know that because I am on a layout over here that has contacts, I know that it will be belong to the anchor of a table occurrence group that is contact. So here's the contacts table occurrence group. I know that if I follow the rules, here I go, I know that if I follow the rules that that layout should be attached to that table, this layout to this TO right here. So then all the data I have access to are these right here. So as it is, I have, I number them, you know, it's TO5, then I got A, B, C, D, there's no E apparently, it's been removed for whatever we decide we didn't need it, all the way down to X. Now, we didn't build a separate table for addresses. You could have because you could have more than one address and really the idea of normalized data is that one, you don't, you don't have address set of fields one, address set of fields two, and address set of fields three, and then four and five and six. You really have, um, if there's multiples of those like email one, email two, email three, you have a separate table for emails. If you're a big Oracle developer and they're paying you $400 an hour for that kind of stuff, then you can go down that road. But every time you, normalize a different bit of data, you need to ask yourself, do you really need to normalize it? One, because if you want to use the data, you have to dip through the relationship to get it. So if I create an address, right now, if I want the addresses, they are going to be in here. I think there's address one, there's an address uh, one, and then there might be a home address in there. Um, we only do two, we kind of keep it simple. The goal was not to go totally crazy with it. And so the same with email addresses, but we run into deals like in our finished good system where we sell our training, a lot of you will buy a training package with one email, then you'll use another email, and our system is really smart. It handles up to three different emails from you, but a couple of you people in here are really wise guys, and what you do is you have like one new email every three or four months, and so our system, when it gets to four emails, it explodes. It can't handle that, and so really, I have to go back and re-injure the system to address all this bad email behavior where, where people don't really stick on an email. Even over the course of a year or two, they're on 12 emails. And, and so that's where you want to normalize. You'd really have an email table and you would access that through there. That makes sense. So it adds more to the relationship graph. It makes it so if you want to be over here and you want to get the address and say that you drag a field, say you drag a field on here and you want to find the address uh, one, it's not going to be in the base table. I have to dig into here and find the correct relationship and find address and then dig it through the relationship. And, then, and every time you, you go dip through relationship, there is a little bit of performance that's sucked away. FileMaker has to do, you're doing mental gymnastics, FileMaker's doing mental gymnastics too. Now the flip side of this, the opposite side of this, is if you tried to put all the fields into one table. That's a really bad idea. You don't want to put all the fields in one table. So if you add, you have one address right here. We don't, I think, have another address on here, or actually we do. If you go under more addresses, we had a home address and a secondary address. This was a, it was, you could do it either way. If you were doing it by super anal rules of database design, that would get a separate table. It could still be on screen like this. It could look just like this. You wouldn't even know it's on a different table, but you would define it to a different table and you'd specify this is one, this is relationship two, this is relationship three. And that would also then give you unlimited extension of that in the design if you were going to run into that, right? But, you know, it's, 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 there's a happy medium of being, you know, it's like someone came to me and they said, well, Salesforce has 200, I mean, just for their base, whatever system, they have 200 and some odd tables. And the average person when they were setting up and using the system was only using 20 or 30 or 40 of the tables. Um, and so really it's where when you get someone like that that's building a system that's going to you know, scale to billions of dollars and all these people, um, you really want to be real anal with it. As it is, the way we built starting point, once again, not right or wrong, it's just the way it is, is if you look at tables, we have 30 tables. If we broke out the addresses and did all this stuff really anally, we could be up to 60. That would be a harder exercise to train people on. So part of this is a great tool. It's scalable. Part of it, it's about training, okay? So the answer is, there is no answer, but if you do it all one way or all the other, probably you, you, there's a happy middle in the medium, middle somewhere you want to find, uh, neither one way or the other way.
uh, don't forget to renew your subscriptions. Be a channel sponsor. In fact, that guy, Wolfpaw66, he's been whining that he doesn't really want to buy our training. And he really should buy the training. And, uh, and so here's the best deal right here for the training. You get everything you need. If you already have FileMaker, you don't need everything, including you know, all the tools and stuff. You just want the video training. Over here is the one you want. If you'd like a coupon, send an email to support at rcconsulting.com. And that goes for Wolfpaw 2, 66. Feel free to get a discount, and you can buy it at a discount price. All right? See ya.